What's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. Today, we have a story of a spoiled kid who is basically just chirping kids in class the entire time. He spends the entire time chirping kids for being poor. However, thankfully, there is karma in this situation. As always, or not as always, but in good stories, the spoiled kid gets the karma he deserves. When the girl he likes overhears him saying this stuff, and let's just say it gets pretty crazy. So sit back, relax, leave a like in the video to claim your free nothing, and let's just jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Brendan. So anyways, in Brendan's class, it is his first period history class. There's this kid who we're going to call the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid had parents with a lot of disposable income. And that doesn't necessarily make you a spoiled kid at all, really. I mean, you might be, like, spoiled with, like, good stuff or whatever. But if you are genuinely a good person and you understand that your circumstances are not a product of your, I don't know, your ingenuity or your, uh, you know, your hard work and then let it all go to your head, as long as you're a good, decent person who understands that, you know, you just won the RNG luck lottery then we're cool. We're genuinely cool if you're a good person. However, if you're like the spoiled kid in this story, then you and I, we got some problems, bro. We got a few problems. And so, yeah, this all started on what seemed like a normal day, as these stories always tend to start, when Brendan was in history class. This was the first day of history class in eighth grade. So he gets in there, sits towards the back of the room, as this was just Brendan's preference for where he would sit, right? He just, he kind of liked the back of the room. Look, I pay attention in class, mostly, and uh, I just also happen to like the back of the room. I kind of like the bird's eye perspective, being able to see everyone. It just makes sense to me. But anyways, Brendan was sitting there, and then this kid came into class. He was wearing the Supreme Box t-shirt, which if you don't know, goes for like 500 to to $1,000 or something. He's wearing Gucci shoes, like the most blatant Gucci shoes, not like ones that are like, oh, those look nice, and then you see a little Gucci label, you're like, okay. It's the ones that just have the big Gucci logo on them. Bro, I don't know about you, but personally, I've never understood the big logos. I always feel like a little logo, maybe, or just like have it be good quality if you're going to drop some money on it. Just have it look nice, bro. You don't need a big logo, bro. And he came in, and he sits down. He's like, ah, oh, what's up, guys? And kind of looks around. <laughs> like, my intros to my YouTube videos. No, I'm just kidding. But he's like, ah, oh, what's up, everyone? Like, my name's Spoiled Kid. Brendan looks over. He's like, what's good? My name's Brendan. Some other kids are saying hello. And, like, Brendan goes over to shake his hand or, like, dap him up or whatever they're going to do. And the Spoiled Kid's like, mm, no, thank you. I don't know where those hands have been. <laughs> and Brendan's just like, dude, what? Like, I'm, I'm not, like, a filthy person. He's like, I don't know. Those shoes say otherwise, and he looks down, and look, Brendan's not wearing the, the, the nicest, cleanest, fresh out of the box, fresh off the cell, shelf type uh, shoes, but at the same time, bro, they're just a standard pair of shoes. I don't know why he's hating so hard. Why are you hating on my guy like that? But anyways, um, you know, Brendan is like, okay, this kid's a little weird or whatever, and uh, things would only get worse. So about a weekend, this kid can't, like, they all go into, like, first period history class again. And this spoiled kid sits down, and he just, like, he looks at Brendan. He's like, yo, dude. And Brendan's like, what's up? He's like, bro, you're such an NPC. Are you supposed to have blood come out of your asshole? Yeah, actually, that's, that's pretty common, man. I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, I think my friend has a problem. Anyways, where were we last? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to have to edit that, bro. Anyways, um, so yeah, so he sits down and the spoiled kid looks at why Brendan is like, dude, you're such an NPC. And, you know, Brendan's like, bro, what are you saying? He's like, yeah, you're such an NPC, bro. Because, like, I looked up your house on Google. And it was only, like, $50,000. <laughs> And at this point, Brent is like, dude, what? It's it's a solid house. You know, it's I got a bed. I got a couch with a TV. Sure, it's not 10 floors, uh, like, st stories tall, bro. But at the end of the day, does it, does it really matter? And, uh, you know, Brendan was just kind of looking at him. And the, and the spoiled kid was like, bro, you're such an NPC for being poor right now. Like, you're such an NPC. And everyone's like, dude, what does that even mean? Like, what are you even trying to say? He's like, bro... You guys wouldn't understand it, too, because by the looks of your shoes, you're literally an NPC right now, bro. Like, I don't know what to say. At this point, Brennan's like, 
<sighs> Looks like someone found the NPC meme. How unfortunate. So anyways, the next day comes in, uh, or like a, co- a little while later, because if you don't know, rec- this story is very recent. You know, very recently, there's been a lot of, a lot of hate on my, uh, on my boy Ohio. The, my boy is the state Ohio. I've never been. It probably sucks. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But look, it's not the worst. And I don't know if you've ever been in any TikTok comment section or just any comment section. Whenever something is terrible, right? Whenever something is terrible, it's like most normal X in Ohio. <laughs> so the spoiled kid must have found out about the Ohio meme. Because uh, Brandon comes in a little while later. And uh, this is like a couple weeks ago. This story is actually pretty recent. And he sits down and the spoiled kid's like, bro, bro, is that a stain on your shirt? And Brandon looks down. And he's like, oh, crap. I forgot I didn't wash this load or whatever. He's like, yeah. He's like, bro. Typical most rich person in Ohio, guys. Am I right? He like turns around and like looks at people. He's like, guys, guys, do you get the joke? I'm saying he's the most rich person in Ohio because he's super poor. And they're all just looking at him like, bro, I'm gonna need you to shut up real quick, bro. Like, please. Like, come on now, please. Like, just we don't need to be we don't need to go down like this, man. Cause like this guy's reputation has been crumbling over the last month. Cause it started, they started class in September. It's now October. And this kid has been making for the entire month offhand comments about how poor everyone else is and how they're an NPC or, oh, oh my God, bro, look at those shoes. You're such a bot. Lol. Or just like the... This, I, I, I've spent like seven minutes trying to explain how annoying the spoiled kid has been. This isn't even the meat of the story. I just think it's necessary for me to spend all this time to explain to you guys why this kid is so annoying and why he deserves what he's about to get, right? So anyways, spoiled kid's like, yeah, Brendan over here is the richest person in Ohio, meaning he's not rich at all. And everyone, this is, at this point, everyone is super fed up with this kid. They're all kind of giving him sideways looks of like, bro, first of all, jokes about someone else's like socioeconomic status, especially in situations where they have literally no control. And also you have no control over yours as well. It just doesn't seem like, look, I'm not saying jokes on, I'm not being the joke police here, but jokes are better when they're on something someone can control than something they can't control. There are situations where jokes on something that people can control aren't good. There are just sometimes jokes where things people can't control can be funny. I'm just saying, generally, I'm seeing the jokes about things that people can control are a little bit better a little bit tamer, a little bit more broadly acceptable, right? Second of all, he's been making the same joke for the last month. Sure, at first he says, oh, Brendan is such a bot. Brendan is such an NPC because his shoes are, like, lame or whatever. But look, and now he's saying, oh, Brendan, you must be the richest person in Ohio. Look, the, the joke every single time, every single day, this kid is making the same joke about how Brandon is so poor because she's a bot NPC and from Ohio. Like, bro, at a certain point, it just isn't funny anymore. Like, it wasn't funny in the first place. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't funny in the first place. But at a certain point, it just isn't funny at all. It, you know, especially like even if it was, was a really clever joke. I don't know if you got... Okay, some jokes, it's funny because it's so unfunny how much you say them. And that's the punchline. But I'm sure you guys know that person. Maybe that kid in your class who just makes the same joke again and again because the first time it was kind of clever. You heard it and you're like, oh, he probably definitely ripped that from someone else. Like, that kid's an idiot. No way he actually could could have come up with that. But funny joke, nevertheless. Like, okay, cool. And then he says it every single day. Even when people don't respond anymore. People just pretend like they don't hear this kid. I don't know if you have this kid. I definitely know if you like this. People just stop, people just start pretending like they didn't even hear him say anything because it's just so annoying. You're just like, bro, it wasn't that funny the first time. It's not that funny the second time. And let me just say, it's not funnier the 300th time you said that joke, right? So this is what the spoiled kid was doing. So after class that day, after he made the Ohio joke, uh, I was about to call him Wallace. That was the subscriber in the last story. Um, Brendan and a bunch of other kids in his class, right? 
they come together. Or, like, one kid goes, comes over to Brendan and be like, hey, we're talking about the spoiled kid. Like, you want to come with us? And it's basically all the kids who kind of sit in the middle slash back of the class. And they're all coming together because they just find this kid so absolutely annoying that they had to have a... They, they had to come together to basically find a way to humble him, right? I've actually had an experience like that. Someone in a class a long time ago was acting so poorly that the entire grade got together. I tried to be as neutral as possible because I was a little bit... No, I was kidding. Um, they all came together to try and overthrow this person because they suck so bad, apparently. I'm not even kidding. This happened to me. Maybe I'll tell the story someday, but... Anyways, right, they all come together after class. And they're just like, bro, this kid needs to be humbled. First of all, jokes aren't funny the hundredth time. But also the jokes are just calling us poor because the thing is they weren't just calling Brendan poor. He was calling all of them poor. And they're just like, dude, it's first of all, we're fairly middle class. Like we have a house. We're able to have like different. We have more than one pair of shoes. Like a lot of kids are barely rocking one, you know, you know, I got two. That's pretty nice. I'm happy with that. Like I'm very lucky for that. We're not even like that poor and even if we were that would actually make it worse right the fact that he thinks that makes it worse and uh yeah at this point they were just like all right we gotta humble this kid so brendan is like okay do we know anything about this kid right and they're like okay we know <laughs> we know his parents do pretty well uh but i'll actually ask around so one other kid in that group of kids who kind of came together to try and overthrow brendan or whatever uh we're gonna call him ben Anyway, so Ben went around, and he was kind of just talking to people, be like, hey, do you know anything about whatever, right? And one of Ben's friends, who's a girl, says, oh, actually, I do. The spoiled kid has been trying to get, has been trying to, like, like get with my friend for the longest time. She has no interest, but um, she hasn't had the heart to say anything, right? And uh, so basically, the spoiled kid has been flirting, and by flirting, I mean legitimately being like, Hey, uh, let's come up with a name for her. Um, dude, I'm just going to uh, call her Audrey. I use the name either Kate or Audrey. I just think of people from my kindergarten class. Hey, Audrey, I just want to know if you wanted to take a ride on my whip this Friday. She'd be like, no, I'm busy. You know, she's like, she doesn't have the heart to say, no, I'm not doing that, bro. She's always like, no. Just, I got something to do. I'm sorry. It said to be like, no, I hate you. Because <laughs> she feels bad. So with this information, Brendan is like, thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you know anything about the spoiled kid? And, um, you know, the girl that Ben was talking to was like, well, I mean, I'm not really a fan. From what I've heard, he kind of sucks. And Ben explains to her that he's been tormenting the class the class that he's in, first period history with Brendan, for the last month, and they need to find a way to humble him. And uh, so, you know, the girl's like, okay, I can, I can think of some stuff. It's going to be a little bit mean, but I definitely have an idea. So she tells Ben the plan, and, plan, and Ben's like, wow, that's tough. But also, you know, maybe we're just teaching him a life lesson at this point. So anyways, Ben goes back to the group, and uh, Brendan, or they kind of meet up at some point, maybe text message, maybe IRL, doesn't really matter. And Ben explains exactly what they're going to do. So it's going to go something along the lines of this. They're going to use the girl Audrey, right, who the spoiled kid has a crush on. And to get her, right, they're, they're going to find, they're going to basically get her to, to blow this kid's heart up. I know it sounds bad. But please remember that he's been calling them bots, NPCs, and residents of Ohio because they've been poor it, relative to his, like, $3 trillion a month allowance because he woke up every day, every single day in class for the last month. So they just need to ego check him a little bit, right? So the plan is they're going to get Audrey to basically firmly say no. And they're not only going to get her to firmly say no, they're going to get her to explain exactly why she says no. And they're not only going to get her to firmly explain why she exactly says no, they're also going to get her it, to say it in front of everyone, basically. Because they're going to somehow convince the spoiled kid, right? This is kind of devious, right? This is a little mean. They're going to convince the spoiled kid 
that he should ask Audrey out at lunch because they all ate lunch in a cafeteria. So he's going to make a big scene about it and she's going to say it loud enough that people will hear and word will spread. I know this is devious. Comment down below if you think this is justified or not. Because I don't know if it is, but also, like, I don't know. I'm trying to be impartial here. This is a little extreme, but this kid hasn't been, get, been good either. So anyways, next day in class is when the plan is slowly set into motion. So the spoiled kid sits down. He's like, yo, Brendan, you're, you're so from Ohio right now because, like, you probably don't have a lot of disposable income. I don't know if it was that stupid, but it was, like, something really lame. And Brendan's like, haha, okay, hey, man. I've heard you got, I heard you got a thing for Audrey. He's like, how did you know? Do you love her? Is she dating you? I will fight you to the death to date her. And uh, Brendan's just like, yo, dude, chill, chill for a second. I'm here to help you. Biggest lie of the century, but whatever, right? He's like, dude, I got some insider information. I got the insider scoop that she has the hots for you, dude. And he's like, oh my God, I totally knew it. I knew that telling her about my whip every single day for a month would totally get her to love me. And in Brennan's head, he's like, wait, you, you asked her every single day for the last month if she wanted to go on a car ride with you? Do you think maybe the fact that every single day she had a different excuse may or may not have indicated that maybe, just maybe, this is crazy, maybe this is a hypothetical man, don't take my word for it, but maybe she's not interested. I know, crazy, crazy me to say something. Like, I should really check myself because that is definitely not the case. She is absolutely and unequivocally in love with you be, at, at the greatest proportion. Like, there's no question about it. I know I'm an absolute, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the crazy person here. I'm insane, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry for even questioning his authority on this. But uh, yeah, Brendan's like, oh, man, I should totally ask her out. And Or sorry, Spoil Kid says that. And Brendan's like, oh, actually, actually, I have the perfect time. So I was actually talking with her friend. And she said that Audrey would really like to be asked out today. He's like, oh, my God, should I do it after class? He said, no, 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 wait, wait till lunch. Wait till lunch. She doesn't want you to ask before lunch. He's, and he's like... Uh, why that specific? And he's like, dude, I just trust me this one. Remember, very devious. Leave in the comments down below if you think this is right or wrong, because I don't know. Um, be the moral police down there. Uh, anyways, and he's like, no, no, no. Gotta do it at lunch, and it's gotta be a big gesture. If you just go over, over to her and be like, hey, I really like talking to you. Do you want to make this a little more serious? She's going to hate that. She's going to say no. And she's going to start kissing a bunch of ladies instead of guys at this point. You're going to scare off from guys forever. What you really want to do is you need to make a really big scene. You need to flex all your money and flex all the things that you could give to her and make sure everybody in the cafeteria is paying attention. Brendan almost lost, like this is, the <laughs> which is like, it's hilarious. Because Brendan is giving him the opposite of the good advice, right? In reality, oh, look, I, okay, you're taking an expert uh, from someone who's not an expert. You're taking advice from someone who's not an expert. I literally clowned people in the last video I posted like three hours ago. Like, oh yeah, people with no play are always given the most advice. So take this with a grain of salt. But in my observations, not necessarily my vast experience in the subject matter, um, you're probably going to want to do option one of just very discreetly and, but, you know, confidently and saying it forcefully, right? That like you've enjoyed spending time together and you want to take it to the next level. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong here. I mean, I'm not the expert, clearly. Maybe I'm wrong, but maybe you don't want to make a massive scene and flex all your parents' money to get her to fall in love with you and date you. Maybe. Look, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I could be very wrong. I'm not the expert here, right? So anyways, uh, the spoiled kid agrees 100%. He's like, dude, oh my God, you are so right. I, I, I know exactly what I'm going to do. So Brendan's like, cool. They sit down, class continues, and his friend leans, leans over to him and is like, dude, you're such a jerk. <laughs> and he says it laughingly because he's in on it as well. And Brendan's like, he's got it coming. If anything, I'm just doing him a favor. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. 
it's a lot of people are going to guess the secret word, but I've been doing them a little bit farther into the videos just because one of these days for a spoil kid video, I'm going to say comment cat down below and I'm going to catch all you people that are commenting spoiled without watching all the way. But in the meantime, collect your free hearts by commenting that down below. Just so you're aware, these videos are on Spotify. The shorts are on TikTok. Submit my your own stories, because this is a subscriber-submitted story, to my Instagram or Twitter DMs. You need to be following me. Those are in the description. And finally, the best thing you can do to support the channel and help grow the community by pushing these videos out farther in the algorithm is finish watching this video all the way to the end. And then when you're done with it, the best thing you can do is watch another one of my story videos, which you can look on the sidebar or YouTube recommended. But a really easy way is my story time playlist, which is in the pinned comment down below. Enough promos or whatever. I mean, leave a like for your free nothing, of course, but let's just jump right back into it. So anyways, it's officially lunchtime. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. So Brendan is sitting down with his friends and they made sure that they were gonna sit down near Audrey and they briefed Audrey on everything. They told, cause look, Audrey is a good hearted girl. So they needed to, they needed to explain to her in great detail why what she is doing is morally the right thing. They needed to explain to her, right? They basically had to explain to Audrey that, you know, exactly what this kid was doing, that this kid's ego was really puffed up by something that really wasn't gonna help him in the future, AKA be bragging about how much his parents make, cause that will not help you at all, especially further on you get in life. It's not just a detriment to him socially now, it will be later on. And the fact that she will strike him down for flexing too hard will actually give him such an important life lesson that he will probably thank all of them later on and take them all out to a fancy dinner. Sure, was Brendan kind of uh, sugarcoating the situation? Was he kind of manipulating it a little bit to be like, you would be morally doing the wrong thing if you didn't do this? Yeah, maybe Audrey was a you know, not the girl who thought about things the hardest, and she kind of just went along with anything that sounded correct. Sure, these are all possibilities, but what matters are the facts, and the facts are that she knew exactly the script to say, and she was going to follow it to a T. So sure enough, Wall uh, sorry, Brendan, Wallace is the last guy's name, Brendan and his friends, they sit down close to where Audrey's sitting, and they watch as the spoiled kid enters the room. He enters the room in a very interesting manner. Because the spoiled kid brings in a sound speaker system. So you already know that it's about to go down, bro. You already know. This is about to be pretty freaking crazy, dude. So yeah, sure enough, he's walking up and he has like a wheelbarrow. Bro's dragging a wheelbarrow into the lunchroom right now and attach and on top of the wheelbarrow or in the wheelbarrow, I should say, or the wagon, I guess it's more of a wagon than a wheelbarrow, let's be correct here. He has the sound speaker, so a big old speaker or whatever, and attached to it is a microphone. So you already know where this is going, bro. You already know that it's going downhill. So yeah, he walks over and he walks over to her and he stops in front of her and Audrey looks a little freaked out because she was expecting that he was about to go crazy, but they were not expecting, or she was not expecting, or I guess <laughs> Brendan and his friends were not expecting this either, for him to go this psycho insane, what is even going on right now moment. So he speaks into the microphone, attention everyone! The entire room goes silent. Cause dude, if anyone screams attention everyone into a microphone that's attached to a, a, a loudspeaker that they're wheeling in with a wagon in the middle of lunch, bro, I'm paying attention. I don't know about you, but I, I'm shifting my head over and <laughs> needing to know if I'm about to hear some crazy stuff, which normally will follow in a situation like this. But he's like, I just wanted to list off all the reasons why Audrey should go on a date with me. And he was about to just completely shoot himself in the foot. Because he's like, reason number one, I have access to really cool cars. And Audrey, I would be able to take you on the coolest rides ever. And I guarantee this. Reason number two, I will be able to bring you to really nice restaurants. I will actually be able to bring you to restaurants that all these other guys... <coughs> The ones without the money like I have would not be able to bring you to. 
Reason number three. If we were to get married, I would never have to do anything and you would never have to do anything because I live off of, of a massive trust fund that you would live off of too. Of course, we're signing a prenup. I mean, you can't be serious right now, guys. Reason number four. And in the middle of reason number four, Audrey gets up and takes the microphone out of his hand. And he says, oh, perfect. You're going to say yes early. I didn't even get through the rest of my 15 reasons. And when Brendan hears this, he's like, bro really wrote down 15 reasons about why his dad was rich, bro. Like, that's crazy. Probably reason number 13 was that he'd add him on his American Express platinum plan or something, bro. Like, I'm sure it's something like that. But anyways, right, you know, she takes the microphone. And, you know, Brendan was looking at her. And you could tell that Brendan was expecting to get a, a, a positive, an affirmative, to get a yes, Brendan. Oh my God, I'm so in love with you. I, I, I could go down on one knee or both knees right now. <laughs> oh, Brendan, I love the poor. My favorite part was when you said your dad had a lot of money. So I was like, yeah, dude. Yeah. So that was not what she said. Believe it or not, that was not the quote that you know came out of her mouth. I know you're probably surprised by that. But Audrey, in fact, said, Brendan... I'm going to have to say no. And the whole, like, there was a gasp that went around the room. Not that people were shocked by this. No, because, like, they were, they would have been, they probably would have gasped even harder if she said yes. But just the fact that she said that into the speakerphone, like, she was kind of told by Brendan that she had to say no really loudly and list her reasons really loudly. But, you know, the spoiled kid kind of kind of came in clutch and saved the day for not him, for everyone else but him, by bringing in, like, a loud, like, a speaker system type thing so that she, Audrey could just, like, speak normally and have everyone hear. And Audrey very intentionally said the following into the speaker system so that everyone could hear it. She's like, Brendan... The only qualities you've put forward are about like the money that your parents made and that you have access to. Those are not qualities that people want in boyfriends. Those are not qualities that people want in friends. Those are not qualities that people want or like want alone in like acquaintances or classmates. And she goes on a list like that. And she's like, Brendan, you have not displayed to me an ounce of originality, personality, anything that has to do with you. Everything that you've shown off to me as a reason why I should date you is a byproduct of, of your parents' work and not your own. It seems to me that your personality is completely inflated. Your ego, sorry. It seems to me that your ego is inflated by the work that was done by your parents that you reap the rewards of. For that reason, I will not go on a date with you until you become a better you. She was really trying to make this a positive spin, but bro, this turned out to be a crazy burn. Like that was, she could have definitely gone harder, but that, and that was Loki a good message, but imagine this kid's reaction or just the, the, the embarrassment when the girl that you ask out in it, cause the thing is, I think the spoiled kid went really hard because remember, let me know in the comments if this is morally good or not. When Brendan was like, dude, she's into you and she's only going to be into you if you go super hard, right? If you really go all out, he probably wouldn't have even gone all out like that. If one, he didn't, well, first of all, he probably wouldn't have even like fully asked her out instead of just asking her on a car ride if he didn't know that she was into him, quote unquote, right? It's not really. But also he definitely would not have brought it or maybe he would have, but it's unlikely that he would have had a loudspeaker and done such a crazy show of whatever if like he wasn't told that, yeah, Audrey's only going to say yes if you show a really ex insane, if, you're, if you go really crazy basically and just shout out all the reasons why she should love you. That's the only reason why. So immediately after, right, she hands the microphone back to Brendan. And Brenda is just like standing there because bro, because bro was lined up for a victory. Bro was lined up for it. A softball, a swing that just connects. Oh, it's perfect. It's beautiful. But no, he got played. He got owned. And immediately, right? Immediately, he turns to Brendan, the guy who said, she's going to say yes. And she's only going to say yes if you make a big scene out of it and tell her all the things that you can give her, a.k.a. All the money you have, that's the only reason why she's going to say yes. And, she, and, you know, the spoiled kid makes eye contact with Brendan. And low-key Brendan feels a little bad because you can tell by his eye contact. This kid is basically looking at him like, why would you betray me, bro? I thought we were boys. I thought we had something. Come on, man. I thought we had something. 
And, uh, but no. But Brendan, after feeling bad for a millisecond, remembers the dude is the richest person in Ohio, a.k.a. he's poor at all for the last month. He's like, okay, well, I'm actually doing something good for the big picture. So the spoiled kid, defeatedly and slowly, I don't know why he wouldn't skirt out of there, bro. If I was in that position, which I hope I never will be, like, what? But imagine I was in that position. I would be skirting out there as quickly as possible, but the spoiled kid was practically dragging this thing behind him as he slowly walked out, defeated, head down, uh, jungle by Egg Boogie playing in his ear pods. I don't even know, bro. Walking out mad slow, walk of shame, bro. If I was in his position, I would be sprinting out of there. I'd be trying to, I'd be already trying to figure out how to transfer middle schools, bro, because that's it for me. Rip, GG, we're done. So, yeah, actually, from that point on, or it's actually, it's been like two weeks since this happened because this is a really recent story. But the spoiled kid, first of all, he doesn't talk to Brendan or the other guys in his class anymore because probably because he feels betrayed. But also, he's not, he's not gunning them. He's not saying, oh, richest person in Ohio right here. Dude, you're a bot for being poor, lol. None of that's happening anymore. So honestly, only time will tell if this was the right, if this actually impacted him in a positive way or if this is going to turn him into even more of a monster than he was before. So I guess we'll find out. Moral of the story is um, just be a good person, I guess. And uh, let me know in the comment section down below if you think what Brendan done, did was morally correct. And today we have a story of a spoiled kid who gets the karma he deserves. I know you'll enjoy it, so let's jump right into it. Subscribe if you're new, and yeah, let's call the subscriber who submitted this story, Jeremy. So anyways... Jeremy went to school with this kid who we're just going to call the spoiled kid. And this kid was the spoiled kid because, as always, he always got everything he ever wanted. His parents, not, look, his parents did have a lot of money, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're immediately a spoiled kid or an entitled kid. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, I know, and like, you know, yeah, their parents do pretty well. However, they're good people, and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't necessarily need to mean that they're bad people. However, the spoiled kid totally let his parents' success get to his head, which explains the following actions. So this all happened one day. It all seemed like a normal day, as these stories normally do. Jeremy was just gone, hanging out with his friends, might have been in class or first period or something like that. And that's when the spoiled kid walks in with his new designer shoes. Are these the new Gucci uh, Yeezy uh, Saint Laurent X uh, Supreme Brick shoes? Maybe. Do they also go for $1,000? Maybe. Either way, it doesn't matter exactly what the shoes are. All you gotta know, know is that the spoiled kid is immediately flexing them. Like, the way he walks into class, he is, like, strutting, strutting in a certain way so that, like, he can show off the label of the shoe as much as possible. So instead of walking in like a normal person and kind of, like, you know, trotting in or doing whatever, he is, like, flexing his foot so it's, like, as flat as possible and kind of shaking it around to get people's attention so that they will look at his shoes. So then when they look at his shoes, they will see the label and be like, oh, my God, he spent a thousand dollars on shoes he must be a great person dude i don't totally understand what he was going for with that but uh either way um he went for it he tried to do whatever he was doing and he was walking in and he was like yeah man i'm gonna be so cool everyone's gonna love me because i have these expensive shoes on yeah so anyways uh jeremy and his friends notice this and jeremy turns to his friend he's like bro once again the spoiled kid is trying to do what the spoiled kid always does basically come in, flex his, like, whatever new thing, because, like, he did this a while ago with his new uh, Supreme shirt or whatever, right? He's like, yeah, man, I just spent so much money on X or Y or whatever. He comes into class. He shows it off to everyone. Everyone doesn't care, as always. He gets upset about it and then realizes that, you know, the real way that I'm going to get people to like me is if I be a nice person. Psych, just kidding. The real way that I'm going to get people to like me is if I get the new Gucci shoes, baby, let's go. Yeah, and it's kind of a cycle that repeats itself. So this was nothing new for Jeremy. And uh, so another important detail that will be extremely important later on, so remember this, is that Jeremy and the spoiled kid, they have a crush on the same girl. And uh, we're going to call this girl, uh, what 
are we in? We're, we're going to call her Audrey. I haven't used that name in a second. Uh, and that was someone I used to go to school with in kindergarten. I've been going through my kindergarten names of people I used to go to school with. Uh, but yeah, we haven't hit her yet. So yeah. Anyways, uh, so Audrey is a girl that both Jeremy and the spoiled kid likes. And they both know about it. And they both know that each other like the same girl. So they already have a bit of a rivalry at this point. Um, you know, because there's a little bit of a rivalry. But, you know, at the end of the day, they, Jeremy just didn't really like this kid for other reasons. The other reasons being that he wasn't a great kid. But Jeremy watches as the spoiled kid goes up to Audrey. And, like, he's walking by Audrey to go to his desk in the first place. But he just stops when he gets to where Audrey is. And, like... It's like, oh, it kind of stretches back. And it's like, mm, ah, like, oh, wow, my shoes are untied. And, like, Audrey looks down, and Jeremy, who's watching the whole thing happen, looks down. Bro's shoes are not untied. He just wanted, a, like, an opportunity for people to look at his shoes. So Audrey looks at him, and she just says, your shoes are not untied. And, you know, the spoiled kid goes down on one knee, unties his shoe, and starts to retie it. He's like, well... I guess, I guess I just wanted, I guess I just wanted to make sure that my shoes were nice and tight. He goes through and he reties them again. He's like, oh, wow, I'm just going to, oh, my foot, it's so sore. I'm just going to stretch it out. He just starts like flexing his like foot around and moving. He's just trying to show off his new shoe. And at this point, like, I don't know, Jeremy's just so annoyed by this. But at the same time, he also isn't like threatened in a sense. And by that, I mean, he knows that Audrey is not impressed by this, um, understandably, understandably, she is not super impressed by the spoiled kid doing this. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, when he walks by Jeremy, he's like, hey, Jeremy, I don't know if you saw my new shoes or whatever. He's like, yeah, man. And, uh, yeah, I also don't care, bro. So you might be thinking, dang, that's kind of harsh. Like, I get that Jeremy doesn't like this kid, but he's being really blatant about it. Look, this kid has been on Jeremy's nerves for the longest time, and they have just historically not gotten along together. So this isn't some surprising move that Jeremy is trying to be, oh my God, Jeremy, you're being so mean to him. No, this is kind of just normal. This is every day. This is standard. And, uh, you know, Jeremy's like, oh man, it smells over here. It smells of jealousy. Am is, that, is that what I'm smelling? Little, little baby's jealous. So at this point, ah, Jeremy's just like, bro, ah, like, just, just, just get out of here, man. Like, you're not going to impress Audrey with that. You're not going to impress me with that. Just go back to your seat. And the spoiled kid gives Jeremy this look. This look of, fine then. I still smell jealousy. He, like, walks over to his seat. So anyways, fast forward to recess or free period or whatever you want to call it. And uh, it was raining outside. It was raining pretty heavy. And all the kids, or at least the big group of kids that Jeremy was in and the spoiled kid was kind of tagging along... They all wanted to stand outside for some reason. I don't know if they were standing outside just to be in the rain, or maybe the rain had stopped. All you need to know is the ground is muddy. Either the rain was going on and the ground was muddy, or it, it had just rained. I think it makes more sense that it, it had just rained, because that would explain why the ground was muddy and why they'd want to go outside. So they were going outside, and the spoiled kid was not paying attention and just steps in a big pile of mud. Yeah, completely, like, re not wrecking, right? You can always wash your shoes. But definitely scuffing up his new super fancy shoes that he was basically revolving his entire personality around. So, yeah, the spoiled kid is like, what? wait a minute. What? No! He looks down. His shoes are completely covered in mud. He's like, no! He turns to Jeremy. He's like, you did this! And Jeremy's just like, uh, what? He's like, you did this to me! And uh, once again, he just looks at him. He's like, uh, bro, I don't think I understand what you're saying here. He's like, y you know what you did. Jeremy, once again, looks at the spoiled kid. and is just like, uh, bro, I really don't. He's like, you planted this mud in front of me because you were afraid that I was going to steal Audrey away with my shoes. And Jeremy's just like, dude, back up a second. What? And the spoiled kid's like, this will not go unnoticed. I will enact my revenge if it's the last thing that I do. And Jeremy's like, bro, first of all, it's not that deep. Second of all, how did I plant a mud puddle in front of you? You really think 
that I watched you go outside, that I watched you walk outside or will go to walk outside. I ran in front of you, went up, this like went on my knees, begged to the rain gods that we would get rain, had it rain for exactly 35 seconds, have it only rain where the mud was in front of you, and wait for you to step in it because you weren't even paying attention. Did I also pray to the, you know, spoiled kids not paying attention god to make you not pay attention as well, bro? Is that how it went down? And the spoiled kid is just looking at Jeremy. He's like, I know what you did. And I, you know what? I will enact my ultimate revenge. And, uh, you know, Jeremy's like, what do you mean by that? He's like, you know what? By the end of this day, Audrey will be dating me. <laughs> and uh, Jeremy's just like, bro, I don't know what you're talking about, man. But good luck with that, buddy. Good luck with that. You know what? If, if that's what's going to happen, that's what's going to happen. But... Best of luck, pal. I have a feeling that's not going to happen. Uh, yeah, so anyways, the spoiled kid is about to go completely crazy mode to try and get Audrey to date him by the end of the day, and it's really awkward. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below, and we also have a special message from our like sponsor. Our sponsor is me. I don't get sponsored. Watch. Hey. I just want to say, if you leave a like on the video right now, you will get your very own free nothing. And I just wanted to show my face as a part of authenticating that I will give you absolutely nothing if you leave a like right now. I mean, you heard the man. Leave a like in the video. And also, as always, the best way to support the channel is just to keep on watching videos after this one. Anyways, so, you know, Jeremy watches as the spoiled kid runs off probably planning to find a way to get Audrey to fall in love with him. And uh, I'm not going to lie, the spoiled uh, uh, Jeremy was not too concerned. Believe it or not, Jeremy was not fearing for the fact that Audrey will be taken away from him because the spoiled kid, he's, uh, he's just so, he's just so like, oh man, everyone wants to date the spoiled kid because everyone likes him. Not. That is just not even close to how things are going right now. So yeah, um, Jeremy watches, and he kind of like walks back in, and he watches as the spoiled kid walks up to Audrey. In the, in the middle of everyone, there's like other kids around, and Jeremy's like, or uh, sorry, the spoiled kid's like, Audrey, I have an important question. And like people kind of knew that the spoiled kid had a thing for her, like on the low key. So people kind of turned around, they turned their heads, they're like, hey, yo, like what's going on over here, bro? Is, is bro about to make a move? And yeah, sure enough, um, kind of like a little bit of a crowd forms and the spoiled kid goes on one knee like he's gonna propose to her and it's like audrey will you be my girlfriend and she's like okay audrey's a very nice girl uh but she also very much does not want to be her boy his girlfriend there we go so she's like uh well uh and he's like well uh, cause at this point, the spoiled kid starts to realize it's not going 100,000% his way. So he starts to be like, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll take you out to dinner wherever you want. Uh, I'll, I'll take you shopping. I'll let you buy literally whatever you want. Uh, I'll let you have these new Gucci shoes. <laughs> he takes off his shoes and she's like looking at them cause they're all muddied up and they smell terrible cause his feet have been in there for like at least five minutes. So, uh, yeah, she's like, ah, I'm sorry. I, I just don't think I'm, I don't want to date anyone right now. And this boy kid's like, okay, <laughs> that's fine. And he just starts running back. And he runs and he sees that Jeremy's looking at him. And the spoiled kid, his face of sadness turns to a face of anger. And he looks at Jeremy. He starts walking right towards him. He's like, you did this to me. And uh, Jeremy's like, bro, I don't know what you're talking about. For the second time today, I don't know what you're saying. And he's like, you took away my Gucci shoes, and now you took away my girlfriend. And Jeremy's just like, bro, once again, I have nothing to do with anything. Like, some things, sometimes things just go bad in your life, bro. That just happens. Uh, wh 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 why are you freaking out at me? What did I do, bro? What? Yeah, so sure enough, um, the spoiled kid says that he will get his super revenge and he's got to watch out because he's about to own him in public and that he's about to get super owned. And Jeremy's just looking at the spoiled kid with this kind of blank look of like, oh, okay. I can't wait to see how this kid quote-unquote owns me. 
Like he's gonna wreck me, bro. He's gonna he's gonna destroy me. Ah, uh, yes, of course. This kid is the spoiled kid is definitely gonna have something on me that makes everybody like him and everyone hate me. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, so the spoiled kid does something pretty ridiculous, as you shall see. Anyways, as you remember, first period, they have class together. So the next day comes around, and basically, the teacher has notes on her desk. So every single day, the teacher will kind of look at the notes to read off of them. So the spoiled kid had a plan that he thought was genius, but actually turned out to be one of the stupidest plans ever that got him in tons of trouble. But what the spoiled kid did was he went over and he replaced, he got there early, and he replaced the teacher's schedule, like the little bullet points that she looks at to see what to say, and replaced it with a piece of paper that had one bullet point on it. And that one bullet point said, Jeremy is stupid, ugly, and poor, and no one should ever like him. Spoil kid, and he said his actual name, but we're going to say spoil kid. He's like, spoil kid is so cool and has lots of money. Everyone should like him. Yeah, I'm not even kidding you. Bro wrote this. I guess what the spoiled kid was thinking was that the, the, that his teacher didn't look at this piece of paper as a reference to generally say what they're doing today. I think the spoiled kid thought that that like, piece of paper was a legit script that she read word for word, and that if he replaced the script, she was so much of a bot that she wouldn't even realize the difference and would just say that sentence out word for word. And I think in the spoiled kid's mind, the teacher was going to say that sentence word for word. All the kids in the class were going to be like, wow, I never thought of it that way. You know, Jeremy really does suck. Spoil kid, you're the greatest ever. And then Audrey's going to go down on both of her knees. Not like that. She's going to go down both of her knees and be like, oh my God, spoil kid, I made a huge mistake. I do want to date someone, but I only want to date one person, and that's you. And then everyone flaunts around the spoil kid being like, you're so cool, you're so epic. And Jeremy's like, what about me, man? And they're all like, you suck, you're the worst. And they all start throwing stuff at him. Yeah, this is basically the fantasy of the spoiled kid right now. So the spoiled kid, sure enough, Jeremy notices that he replaces the piece of paper on the teacher's desk with his own little writing. And as soon as the teacher gets in, you know, she uh, like picks up the piece of paper, looks at it, and just, just starts staring at the spoiled kid. Because it's like when you write your own name in graffiti, like you vandalize a building and you're like, bye, uh, I don't know, Connor Pugs, right? <laughs> like, bro, they're going to know who it is. You don't, but it's like you rob a bank and you leave your business card. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm just going to leave my business card right here. Bro really outed himself by saying like, oh, this kid sucks and this kid's the best. Obviously, I mean, maybe not obviously, but at least in pretty clearly the kid where it says this kid is the best, obviously, pretty clearly it's that kid who did it. Yeah, so sure enough, the teacher looks at the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid is looking blankly back at the teacher with this big old grin. And the teacher's like, spoiled kid, can you come up here for a second? And the spoiled kid's like, what, uh, me? And he gets up. And Jeremy's looking at him, because Jeremy only knows this information later on because, like, other kids tell, like, bits of the story, and he puts it together from there. But sure enough, the teacher, like, <laughs> says, like, a spoiled kid, please come up here for a minute. And a spoiled kid comes up here, and, like, Jeremy can faintly hear her be like, did you write this? And he's like, uh, no, I think this was written by you, actually. <laughs> yeah, he was really trying to gaslight her and be like, no, Miss Whatever, Miss Teacher, you wrote that I am super awesome and that Jeremy sucks. It was you the whole time. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but uh, sure enough, she's like, spoiled kid, do you really think that I'm going to fall for this? He's like, what? Come on, me? No, 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 Miss Teacher. You're being ridiculous here. I would never write this, even though it's totally true. I would And she's like, spoiled kid, this was very clearly you. And, he, and she turns to, like, some kid in the front row. Adam, and Adam looks up. Oh, yeah, what's up? Adam, did spoiled kid put this note on my desk? Adam's like, uh, yep. And spoiled kid's like, Adam, you snitch! And she's like, spoiled kid, please go to the front office. He's like, mm, it's true, though. Why don't you just say it because it's true? Speak more facts in class, Miss Teacher. She's like, spoiled kid, 
get to it. Go to the front office. Yeah, so Spoiled Kid got, like, one day in school, uh, just, like, after-school detention for, like, an hour. It wasn't that big of a punishment because you, like, didn't really do that much. But he did say some pretty bad stuff in the letter. And uh, he wasn't, like, forced to apologize to, um, to, to Jeremy or anything, so that's not how Jeremy figured out. Jeremy just figured out from, like, bits and pieces of other people. But, yeah, sure enough, the Spoiled Kid got owned by his teacher and... Uh, Believe it or not, Audrey did not fall in love with him. Shocker. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it.